Hi there, Pastor Lars Hammer here from Lord of Grace Lutheran Church in Marana, Arizona. I want to welcome you all back to the Walk Through the Psalms. This is my little uh, set of devotions that I do where I just look at a small handful of verses in the Psalms, uh, each video, and we'll just kind of walk through what does the verse say, but also a little bit about what it means. The reason I do the Psalms is because the Psalms do speak uh, to a lot of the things that I think we go through today, and they're also very heartfelt expressions of where people are at. So, let's get started. Psalm 69, verses 16 through 29, and we're going to read this from the New Revised Standard Version of Scripture. So we'll read it through, and then I'll break it down a little bit for you here. Verse 16, we'll start right here at verse 16. Answer me, O Lord, for your steadfast love is good. According to your abundant mercy, turn to me. Do not hide your face from your servant, for I am in distress. Make haste to answer me. Draw near to me, redeem me, set me free because of my enemies. You know the insults I receive and my shame and dishonor. My foes are all known to you. Insults have broken my heart so that I am in despair. I looked for pity, but there was none. And for comforters, but I found none. They gave me poison for food, and for my thirst, they gave me vinegar to drink. All right, lots of good stuff here. We'll start at the beginning. Verse 16. Uh, Answer me, O God, your steadfast love is good. So, he's asking, making a plea, right? It's always okay to make a plea. And the plea isn't give me what I want, it's just give me an answer. God, give me an answer. Why should God give me an answer? Because God's steadfast love is good and uh, says, according to your abundant mercy, turn to me. So the psalmist is, once again, holding God accountable for being what God is supposed to be, right? God, if you really are what you say you are, then you will do what you're supposed to do. And what is God really? God is, ste is steadfast love and abundant mercy. Those are the qualities of God. Inter isn't, that, isn't that great? Steadfast love and abundant mercy. These are the qualities that define God. So the psalmist is coming to God with a prayer and saying, God, I need you to respond to me because you are, doesn't say honorable, doesn't say always right, it doesn't say powerful. I mean, those things come up in the psalms and other places, but in this one, the reason why God should answer is because, God, you're loving. You have steadfast love and abundant mercy. Steadfast love and abundant mercy. Wonderful qualities uh, to think about with God. And the request is, answer me, and then turn to me. Turn to me. Now, this is a kind of an interesting image. It's playing off that whole idea of uh, shame and dishonor. Again, Modern Americans, we don't have a whole lot of shame, right? Uh, we go to Walmart in our pajamas. We don't really feel a whole lot of shame anymore. Uh, we do uh, all sorts of scandalous things and then brag about it on Facebook. Uh, our culture is not quite the same as others, but we still have places where we shame people. And the whole point of shaming people is to sort of isolate them. It's a tool for putting down be certain behaviors uh, punishing people for stepping out of line uh, without sort of bringing in a court, but using peer pressure. There are places where shaming is really good, uh, right? If somebody comes up and they express Nazi views, they should absolutely be shamed. That doesn't bother me. I'm, I'm okay using shaming for some of those things. It can be overdone. But in the psalmist's culture in ancient Israel and in the Middle East a lot today, the notion of honor and shame are deeply important concepts. And so when a person is 
on the receiving end of the shame and dishonor. It is a horrible place to be. Your whole livelihood, your reputation, and your family's livelihood and reputation uh, can rest on this. And, um, and so usually when somebody gets thoroughly shamed, nobody wants to be your friend. Nobody wants to be around you. Nobody wants to be near you. And few things are worse than being innocent and getting shamed, right? Like being someone who's accused of do doing some heinous crime, but you're innocent of it, but everybody treats you like you're a villain and doesn't want to be around you and walks the other way and calls you names and spits on you when they see you. And, and who, who wants to be the person to be the friend of the person being shamed and dishonored? Well, the psalmist is in that situation. Rightly, wrongly, I'll assume wrongly. I'll assume the, the psalmist is being unfairly picked on, unfairly shamed. Who is going to be the friend? Who is going to stand with the person that's got the unfair dishonor? Who is going to be the one that sides with or is seen with or chooses to be in the presence with the person who is the outcast? The Lord God is. Why is the Lord God going to do that? Steadfast love and abundant mercy. And so this is a, uh, an idea that you'll see in the Psalms over and over and over again. God, my enemies have shamed me. God, my enemies have disowned me and dishonored me. God, can you at least be one person who doesn't run away from me? And um, of course, the answer is yes. God is the God of those who are outcast and downtrodden and oppressed. Um, so let's keep going. Verse 17, do not hide your face from your servant, for I'm in distress. Okay, hide your face, right? When you're shamed, you don't wanna look at someone. You don't wanna be seen with someone, you turn away, right? In some cultures, the shaming is a literal turning away. I'll cross my arms and look the other way, right? I, I will try to erase your existence. If God is loving and merciful, God will not turn away from me. God will not allow my face, my existence to be erased. God will choose to look at me even in my distress. Right? I'm in distress, God. Uh, oh, and make haste to answer me. Could you hurry it up? <laughs> Could you put a rush on it? Uh, sometimes the psalmists are very patient. But then, they're, then they'll kind of double back and go, well, but if you could make it quicker, please do. Um, again, verse 18, draw near to me, redeem me, right? Draw near to me. Come and be in my, please God, be in my presence. Don't leave me here all alone as the outcast. Redeem me, so I'm not sinless, sinless right? I've done things, salvage me, uh, salvage my reputation. I'm always, I always think of like Tosh, what is it, 2.0? Two, he calls himself Tosh 2.0. And the guy he does these, he goes on the web and he finds these videos of people who kind of embarrass themselves. You know, the person who tries to do some big famous flip and then the flip fall, fails and everybody laughs at him and they hashtag fail, hashtag loser failed or whatever. And so then he comes and he says, I'm gonna offer you web redemption. Uh, and I'll film you doing the flip the right way. Uh, a little bit like, that's another example of that, pop culture example. Mariah Carey, I don't remember what year it was, she got on uh, New Year's Eve and got on to go and sing away and she did not get those words right one bit. She didn't lip sync her own song, the dance moves were off. It was, it was a train wreck. Um, what did she do? Uh, in order to get web redemption, uh, she came back, was it the next year, two years later, and she nailed that song perfectly, right? She was getting redeemed. Getting redeemed doesn't always mean that you're a horrible person, uh, although being, you know, we all have our faults and things we've done wrong. In many ways, it's salvaging our reputation, restoring our place in the community, restoring our honor, and in many ways, that's kind of what redemption is, right? So the, the, the psalmist here is asking for a redemption in the public eye, a restoration in the public eye, not necessarily just a, 
uh, from a sort of a perspective of wash my sins away. This doesn't use sin language, at least in this passage. So I kind of like that idea. Um, God, restore my image, restore my image and my reputation, take away that shame from me, all right? Draw near to me. Because what, of course, is the hardest part about being falsely accused of something or falsely punished to something is the loneliness, right? You can endure an awful lot of pain if you've got people who are with you, who love you and care about you. To be left alone, to be left to suffer alone, that's the worst. The loneliness can often be the worst part of it. And so the psalmist is saying, God, can you at least come near to me? You know, can you be my friend? Um, because you know, verse 19, you know the insults I receive and my shame and my dishonor. Uh, my foes are all known to you, right? So you, you, you know what's happened to my reputation, right? We, we, I'm not gonna deny it. Insults have broken my heart so that I'm in despair. I looked for pity, but there was none. For comforters, I found none. Again, this is the isolation. Shame works by isolating people. And now I'm all isolated. Who does the person turn to? Turns to the Lord God. The Lord God, the God of the brokenhearted. Right, that's one of those songs. You know, the humble king, you are the, the God of the lonely and the brokenhearted. That's what God is. And I can't emphasize that message enough. You can never say it too much. Often in preaching, in theology, God is portrayed as the great, powerful victor who conquers. And God is the one who gives the tools for you to have victory and conquest. Um, sometimes it's good to have some victory, but there's this other side of God that doesn't get played as much. And that's the God of the outcast, the God of the person who's shamed, the God of the person who's oppressed. Instead of this image of a God who comes down and hands you the tools to get to the top of the heap, this God goes and deliberately moves to the bottom of the heap. This God sits at the unpopular person's table. This God goes and hangs out in the yard with the prisoners. This God goes and hangs out at the halfway house with the people that nobody wants in their neighborhood because, you know, if they did it once, they'll definitely do it again, and they'll probably hurt my property values. You could say God is the God of people who lower your property values. God is not the God, this is the God of losers, not the God of winners. I find great comfort in that. And I want to proclaim that a lot more. It doesn't preach as well. God of the losers. But I think we've all been there. Unless your life has been a pure cakewalk, you've probably been at some point, probably many points, where you have not felt like the winner. And it's not a fun thing to announce, to admit. You know, because of X, Y, Z traits that I have, people have shamed me. Because of these things, I've been bullied, I've been picked on, I've been outcast. But to know that the Lord God, the maker of the universe, the creator of all things, because of steadfast love and abundant mercy, is willing to be seen with you, to draw near to you, to be in your presence. Remember, we can endure an awful lot if we have somebody with us. And so this is what the psalmist is saying. I've been through hell. I mean, we get this list of, this is a list of all the things that happen. They're not just shaming, right? Starting at verse 20, right? Insults have broken my heart. No pity, oh, so you got insulted. There was no pity. Um, nobody was willing to comfort you. They saw you upset, nobody came to comfort you. And then they tried to poison you. Is it literal poison? Did they literally try to poison you? Maybe. But could this also be a poetic image again? You know, instead of giving me nourishment, instead of giving me something that would be alive, they, they just kept, uh, they just heaped poison on it. 
They heaped poison on me and gave me vinegar to drink. No mercy. They kicked me down and then they kicked me when I was down. And then when I begged for water, they gave me vinegar. Lord God, can you be in my presence? Draw near to me. That is the God here that we see in this psalm. So, all right. That's my, song, that's my thoughts for the, the day. Um, thanks for tuning in. As always, message me. Let me know if you got anything else going on. Otherwise, I hope you all have a great day. God bless.